Yes, because Silas was the um, the unit that funded the island for the first year. Um, we're getting, we're funding the um, sort of ongoing the lease of the island um, from the Education and the Department of Information Studies Department for this coming year. Um, but Silas, because inquiry-based learning, it's, it's certainly one of my interests. I'm actually uh, an academic fellow in, in Silas, uh, so it's a part of my time at the moment is, is focused particularly on inquiry-based learning. Um, and I just wanted to take you out here. Um, you might not want, <laughs> you might not be interested in, in this from the point of view of yours, but um, the, we, the conference that we had a thread of um, in Second Life was the Learning Through Inquiry conference in June. Um, and I also wanted to take you to the research, research Steps model, which might be new oh, since you were last great. here. Um, um, and part of this, in, in fact, it's a very major initiative in the UK has been to fund centres for excellence in teaching and learning and Silas is one of these um, and there's been a lot of money it, it got um, nine million US dollars over five years um, that's just our centre and the 70 of these centres so it's been a, a boost in trying to improve learning and teaching um, and it's included the library as part of the partnership in Silas and information literacy is one of the core streams in in this initiative so it's an education initiative to do with um, focusing on teaching which encourages inquiry and gets the students to think up their own questions as well as thinking up the answers um, and the librarians have been very much involved in that and also had their own um, inquiry based learning course a course about in inquiry based learning over a, about six months uh, with sessions at lunch times as well as being partners in some of the projects to do with Silas um, and in the thread, it doesn't look actually very much, but there's a sort of object, a, a collection of objects over there, which is one of the sessions in the conference was um, discussing what is inquiry-based learning and the avatars were putting together um, sort of ideas about what things made up inquiry-based learning, which was a parallel activity to what the main conference was doing. But I think <laughs> um, if we could go up to the research steps model, um, if you want to teleport up there. I seem to be having trouble teleporting. I get almost there. And it's worked really well because they understand more and they've got more interested in thinking about well, what does make something a good research poster so they're learning about what makes good research as well it, it turned out to be um, it's something we sort of tried and we weren't sure whether it would be okay or not and it's worked it worked much better even than we thought um, and the poster is, is part of their final mark and the students um, assess the posters as well as the teachers we weight it in favour of the teachers' marks, but in fact, both years that we've run this class, the marks, sort of the average mark from the students and the teachers, has been really very amazingly close, um, which I think is good. <laughs> Just getting some good visuals here. Yes, I think those are probably the main things related to teaching um, and information. On the other side of the island, I can't remember whether I got the cute Hobbiton house when you were there, it's, it's, okay. so it's, it's developed scenically <laughs> and at the moment it's part of, part of it's a bit of a mess because um, I had student residences over there and so I'm rethinking that. There, were, there weren't that many students who decided they wanted to live there. What um, I'm aiming to do is get one of those, uh, get an open space, um, one of the spaces that's uh, a lot cheaper than a, whole, a usual island. What I'm aiming to do is get one of those and then um, everyone who's using the island can use that as sort of a really big sort of sandboxy type area but also if students want to put any homes or anything they could do it on that area. I think that's probably better and, and leave them to 
to choose their own hat because I think that'll be more fun for them. I think one of the issues, I was a bit worried about letting students do what they like because of space and also because of number of prims. Um, but I think if it's in that area over there, they can um, they can leave them more to their own devices. I love this building, like all the, or I shouldn't say building, but the structure with the um, like glass floor. It looks very good in the on the screen. Mm. Yes, it was. It's um, it's a prefab, but I changed it. Well, I, for example, I, the the floor was originally. I can't remember. I think it might have been wooden planks or something. Um, but I I made it semi-transparent and put on one of my. In fact, the it's a a photograph of um. Uh, a vapor trail in the sky, <laughs> which I used as a sort of, um, uh, which you can see is is on each cube. But I thought that was quite a nice, subtle pattern. Um, and then made it semi-transparent. And I changed the colors and things to make it a bit, because it was sort of, it's a sort of steampunk um, originally, really. And I've taken away some of the bits and made it more blue and white. Um, yeah, I'll get some close-ups of the structure. Yes. I mean, because this, how does a, a place feel? I mean, to me, this this feels very cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I use prefabs really throughout the island, but then occasionally I've hacked them about a bit to get the, the look and feel that I wanted. <laughs> 